On Tuesday, June 3rd, OETA will begin airing a seven-part series on Oklahomans and space. Produced by Bill Moore, the series will highlight the astronauts and missions that made Oklahoma one of the top contributors to the U.S. space program. I talked about the series and space exploration with John Harrington. Born in Wetumpka, in 2002, Harrington became the first enrolled member of a Native American tribe to fly in space. John, for decades, children grew up in the United States wanting to be astronauts. You got to be one. Yep. I grew up doing the same thing. I used to sit in a cardboard box and dream I was going to the moon. So then back in the 60s, yeah. But you only flew one mission. Flew one mission uh, back in 2002, went to the space station. Got to, I got to do everything in one mission that a person in my position as mission specialist would get to do. I sat on the flight deck as a flight engineer. I did three spacewalks. Uh, Columbia and his mission happened right after mine, so we didn't fly for, what, two and a half years. Right. I was assigned to the space station uh, to be a commander to two Russians, but having a medical issue with my back that, that disqualified me. So started looking around, and that's what brought me back to my home state, Oklahoma, was a uh, rocket plane. You mentioned the three spacewalks. Yes, sir. What is that experience like? Wow. Uh, people tell you what it's going to be like, but it's not until you get outside and you realize that it's, uh, it, it's that and more. Um, in the pool we train in, water slows you down. So it's, you know, it's hard to start, easy to stop in the pool. Once you get in space, it's easy to start and hard to stop. So you can get out of control kind of quick. Uh, so you have to move a lot slower. Um, I, I held on kind of tight, you know, for the first few minutes, and you realize you're not going anywhere. Uh, and so what, what you focus on, if you focus on just the thing closest to you, um, your mind will actually flip you upside down. It can say, well, you're right side up, you're right side down, and it'll do it instantaneously. And that was the thing that freaked me out initially, like, wow, this is just, and then you can control it. It's a lot of fun. And we saw through your camera a great view of the Earth. Yeah, yeah. As a rock, I was a rock climber. I used to hang off of cliffs all the time. And this was the ultimate cliff. I could you know, look over, you know, 220 miles down uh, the side of the space station. Not just that, you look off across the, the curvature of the Earth and, and going, you know, there's nothing between me and what's out there. You know, right. you don't, that, was a, that was an OG whiz moment, too. You took some interesting items with you into space. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, took a flag for the Chickasaw Nation. Uh, presented that to Governor Anatubby when I came back. Also flew uh, eagle feathers. Uh, I was given an eagle feather by a gentleman who was an elder with a, uh, the American Indian Science and Engineering Society. And he gave me a little eagle feather when I first became an astronaut. He said, you haven't flown yet, so here's a little feather. <laughs> uh, but he gave me another one uh, that came from the same eagle, actually, that Ellison Onizuka had flown uh, on his first mission before he flew. Uh, then he flew on the Challenger and perished. But, uh, that's now in the Smithsonian, the Eagle Feather that I flew. You mentioned the Columbia, which occurred after your flight, yes, sir. after your mission. How does that affect the astronaut corps? It obviously shut it down for a while. No, oh, you know, the astronaut corps kept working. I mean, we had a lot to do because we had to figure out what the problem was, what the issue was, and, and how, to, how to solve it and then to fly again. Uh, it was a really challenging period, about six months. A lot of us worked in outside Lufkin, Nacogdoches, Corsicana, you know, from really south of Dallas all the way to to Louisiana, you know, helping recover debris and, uh, and then to put that debris together so we could actually, people would analyze, you know, exactly what happened. And we're very fortunate that they did because there was a recorder that was on the Columbia that was not on any other vehicle that actually gave us the data that showed the stresses and the strains and the temperatures that it led to what the impact was and, and how it propagated through the vehicle. So it was a remarkable thing. But yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking, it really was. Has your experience in space meant more to you as time has passed? Um, yeah, you, you relive it. Every time I talk about it, I get a chance to relive it and showing uh, videos and showing photos of my flight. But there's always, I was told by uh, Jerry Ross, uh, who flown in space seven times, uh, you know, most on any, with him and Franklin Shane Diaz uh, on the shuttle. And he said, take a picture in your mind of what you see and sear it in your memory because you'll always have that. And that was that period being off the edge of the space station and, and looking out at something. I get to relive it every time I talk about it. So. You are featured in the new series, Oklahomans in Space, and the complimentary book that goes along with it. Do you keep up with the other Oklahomans? Uh, I've met around? General Stafford. I've had a chance to meet with him. I was invited to his 40th anniversary for Apollo 10, which was great fun. Uh, a lot of the Apollo astronauts that I watched on, on TV growing up, I've got to be friends with some of them. And, and uh, that, to me, is fun because I realize I'm in this really, really unique group of individuals, but I never pictured myself being in that and then having a chance to meet these folks and, and uh, you have a, have a lot of commonality, a lot of common experience. The producer Bill Moore has been working on Oklahomans in Space for many years. Mm -hmm. It is now ready to be seen by the world. What should viewers take away from this series? One thing about Oklahomans in Space, people always say, well, there's a lot of astronauts from Oklahoma. Well, an astronaut from Oklahoma has been involved in every 
portion of the space program from Mercury all the way uh, to the ISS, flying on the ISS. And I think that's unique in the fact that there are people from the state of Oklahoma and not just astronauts, but engineers and scientists, uh, flight controllers, folks have been involved in the space program really from the get-go. And I think that's what Bill has done a fabulous job of, is presenting that to the public, that really what exists here in the state of Oklahoma, very few folks really understand it. And he's captured it, and I think he's done a great job. Is there a reason for that? A reason that Oklahomans have been attracted to space flight and aerospace? You know, I work ethic. Uh, I, you know, it's, I come from a small town, Wetunk, Oklahoma. My mom and dad were, you know, born and raised in Oklahoma. My brother's born in Oklahoma. Um, I was born in Oklahoma. Um, I think it's ingrained in who we are, what we do. You, know, you like to work hard. You like to, you know, always ask a lot of questions. Always kind of adventurous, I think. You know, in my case, and always trying to, to seek a new horizon, maybe. The space program has fallen victim to government austerity. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see done in the space program going forward? Well, I think the two, really two reasons to fly in space, one's a political reason, the other's a commercial reason. You know, we had the political reason, the space race. You know, we, we, we did what the president set out we should, we should do, and we did a fabulous job of doing that, but that was the criteria for doing that. The International Space Station, the shuttle was sold as a vehicle that could get us to space and back routinely at a lower cost. You know, fabulous vehicle, very complicated, took a lot of money to do that. Space Station, I think, has been a great uh, method to look at engineering from a long-term perspective and flying stuff in space for long periods of time, and also on an international cooperation level, working with the Russians, working with all these countries around the world that, that built, assembled, and, and actually are operating and flying in the Space Station. So I think all these different criteria have meant a lot to the space program, but to go back to the moon and go to Mars, there has to be an imperative as to why we're going to do that, why we're willing to spend the money. And if there's a commercial reason to do it, people are going to do it. If they can make a dollar on it and you can, you can find an investment and return an investment, they'll do it. Um, but until that point comes where there is a requirement or a rationale to do it, we find life uh, on another planet. We find life on Mars. Life existed on Mars. I think we'll fundamentally change the way we look at our, our own existence and, and where we're going, where we've come from. And uh, I think that may be an imperative, but it takes leadership as well. Yeah. The seven-part series is Oklahomans and Space. Commander John Harrington, thank you. Thank you. Good Appreciate to see it. you again. I see you too.